Good day folks. Well, it's time for the final part of the day. We're engine autopsy. Hmm. I've already started playing around with the rattle gun and got some things loose. Making sure I can get the rear mains, or sorry, the main crankshaft bearing ha uh, caps off. And even the flywheel. I wasn't expecting to be able to undo them, but it's nice and loose now. They are lock tighted and very tight, but they do come off with a rattle gun. If your engine makes run funny clunking noises, sometimes it can be because you're, um, if it's an auto, sometimes the torque converter bolts can get loose or flywheel bolts might not have been tightened properly. And you get clunking like that. That's not a good sign, especially when they decide to shear the bolts and this thing comes out through the bell housing like a big giant saw doing 3000 RPM or more. Yeah, not fun. So anyway, let's take the flywheel off. Starter motor's gone. I'm done cranking it at the moment. Uh, starter motor's pretty simple. Very simple starter motor. Only uses 8mm studs to mount on the engine block. Delco Remy Korea. It's the original starter motor. Doesn't have permanent magnets in the, in the uh, housing either. It's got a uh, series wound uh, stator and rotor, not like some of the cheaper ones which have permanent magnets. It's actually a pretty strong starter motor, so that's a keeper for other projects. But anyway, I'll continue to rattle these bolts out, which are very well loctited in there, and get rid of the flywheel and. Uh, start removing these main crankshaft bearings and they're numbered as you can see one two three four and five five contains part of the rear main crank seal as well but before then i think actually i'll loosen these uh rod caps the big uh big ends on the uh connecting rods that's pretty important too so loosen them off 13 millimeter socket. Um, yeah, I'll leave the rear and front and rear main caps in place, loosen these off, and then we'll look at dropping the uh, big ends, take them apart, and see what kind of carnage is going on in there. Okay, so everything's loose at the moment. I can uh, start removing some of the bolts. And we'll start with this cylinder here. It's closest to the front main bearing cap. I'm not sure if these engines run like this is cylinder number four or this is cylinder number four. I'm not 100% sure how they do it on these. I can't see any stamps on it either. They might be on the other side. 8mm high tensile screws. Kind of normal. And I'll go in the tub. Yeah. That's not too bad, but that's the bottom half. It's the top half I'm worried about. Yeah, a little bit of wear on there, not too bad. You can certainly see where the piston's been hitting the, uh, the walls. That's what dieseling will do to it. These rings are very springy though. I wouldn't expect them to shatter. But yeah, these little patterns here are kind of interesting. It'll be to do with the uh, detonating which makes the piston do that very quickly. It's called piston slap. Yeah, it's all there, it's just very carboned up, sooted up. Anyway, that's number one. That's what I'm calling it. I'm calling that one number one.
Again, not much of the. No real difference to the other side, or the other one. And it's not scored down to copper or anything. Again, a bit of a glossy spot, you can tell there's a bit of wear on it. But this engine always had oil pressure up to it, so I wouldn't expect that to be an issue. Still got those characteristic marks on the piston skirt. It was working alright, if I replaced the spark plugs it would have run a lot better. The rings aren't smashed. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll take the up the top ring off and uh, fit it into the bore and we'll just have a look at how much gap there is on each of them once I've done dismantling it. Same deal. Same level of wear and tear. A little bit of pitting in it, but just where the white metal start to come away. Again, it's got those uh, characteristic marks on it. As you can see, there's nothing much in there apart from stress points there and there. And there. And so that's the result of the piston slapping detonation, which has also cleaned all the carbon and crap off the top. It's so violent, it works pretty well. And again, compression rings are still fine. They're not smashed apart. Yeah, still half decent, serviceable. Hmm, I've got mail. Yep. Yeah, no smashed rings. They're still quite good. It's just these wear patterns that are interesting. Probably also to do with heat expansion. As the piston heats up, these surfaces start to contact, especially here, where this massive, sorry, especially here, where this massive aluminium starts to expand and push the piston out to the bore, and that's why you're getting this, this kind of pattern, at least that's my theory. But yeah, that's fine. And again, the wrist pins don't feel particularly loose on any of them. Gudgeon pin, as you'd also call it. Yeah, really interesting. Let's try to knock the camera over with the airline. Okay, front main. 
no copper showing at all. It's a not, actually quite a nice bearing. Now remember, thrust from the piston goes down on the uh, connecting rod side of the main, of, of its own bearing, whereas in this case it's the crankshaft that's pushing down on this side. This is what takes all the load. And that seems to be just fine. Let's take off number two. Yeah, number two is just fine. This en engine was probably well and truly rebuildable, but like I've said a million times before, the engine itself and the car that it was in is an absolute dog. Not worth it. Yeah, there we go, you've got thrust bearings either side, integrated thrust bearings, and the centre main bearing. That shell will come out with those thrust bearings and everything attached, it's one piece. Yeah, nothing wrong with that one. Not without getting a micrometer out to measure it. Same deal, that one's fine. Whatever damage was done to this engine was minuscule. Certainly not serious. Yeah, here comes the fun part, getting this bastard out. I'm sure there's a technique, I'm just being crude. Okay, well the rear main bearing was well and truly stuck to the rear main seal. Someone has, has had it apart, unless they use Celastic at the factory, but it's all glued together, essentially. But as you can see, crank still works. <laughs> The other sides will be better than the other the, than the halves that I've removed. This is where the thrust goes, and even then, this is at the working end, and it's still not too bad. Again, the engine wasn't knocking or anything; it was just lo losing compression and other issues, smoking, burning oil. As you could see in the uh, previous part, the um, head gasket was blown, just like when I got it. But yeah, let's get the crank out, get clean everything up and do a uh, check of the top ring gap. We'll have a look at the top ring gap. It's one thing I haven't done before. But either way, yeah, would have been a good rebuildable core unit, but these engines just aren't worth rebuilding at all. They're a dime a dozen, and even the local auto racker didn't want one. I, I offered him everything I could from the uh, car itself the day we were Lanos didn't want anything. It's already overstocked and just can't get rid of the stuff apart from scrap it or throw it in the rubbish bin. Oh well, it's wasteful Australia. Our cars are now overly stringent roadworthy standards. It's only uh, valuable items like the RAV4 there which is still worth I don't know six and a half seven thousand dollars with a roadworthy. That's worth doing but Daewoo Lanos, nah forget about it. They're only worth a grand, maybe two at the most. Okay, well there you go. We've got the crank out. Fairly simple cast iron crank. Uh, yeah, I'll get the top rings off, stuff them in the bores, and we'll have a look at that before I chuck all that out. Uh, yeah, and I gave these bearings a bit of a wipe down. Front and rear mains obviously bear a bit of uh, radial load, so they've got a bit of wear on them. The rear main's got a bit of a glossy spot there, but that's pretty normal. It's only when they're really down to copper you start to worry about it, or steel. 
that's when they get noisy anyway. Like this thing just has nominal wear for a 180,000 K motor. And it's done 180,000, so that's not bad for a generic motors block lump. It's just another generic motors lump. But they do their job, they're cheap, they work. And this one's going to the graveyard as soon as I've done that ring test. <laughs> and that's about all there is to it. It's scrap. Okay, well there you go. That's the ring gaps. Very close, like normal. Nothing really wrong with the bottom end of this engine. I don't know if the bores have overlized due to heat. Because this engine had been cooked before I got it. But... I don't have any telescopic gauges to actually tell you properly. I could try and do it with a uh, regular caliper, but nah, not reliable at all. You've got to be able to get down a bit deeper and actually measure it properly with telescopic gauges. So yeah, I'd say the bottom end would have been rebuildable, but the uh, head itself was stuffed, or at least the gasket, and it required a full reco. So yeah, even though it ran on Jet A1 for a while, didn't smash any rings, didn't hammer the crap out of the, the uh, big ends, although without pro proper testing equipment it's impossible to tell, but I'd say this thing would have been fine given a basic rebuild. There's just no point. So there you go. Autopsy complete. The victim is dead. It's a dead woo, as uh, Daewoo Parts puts it. <laughs> One dead woo engine from generic motors. Thanks for watching.